Today, in place of a traditional homily, I am going to read to you a brief summary of the life of St. John Hughes from Franciscan Media. How little we know where God's grace will lead. John was born in France in 1601 into a poor rural farm family. During his life, he was a religious member, a parish miss missionary, a founder of two religious communities, and a great promoter of devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. John joined the religious community of the Oratorians and was ordained a priest at age 24. During severe plagues and pandemics in 1627, and 1631, he volunteered to take care of the sick in his own diocese. Lest he inflict his fellow religious members, during the plague he lived in a huge cask in the middle of a field. At age 32, John became a parish missionary. His gifts as a preacher and confessor won him great popularity. He preached for over 100 parish missions, sometimes the engagements lasting from several weeks to several months. In his concern with the spiritual improvement of the clergy, John realized that the greatest need was for seminaries. He had permission from his general superior, the bishop, and even a cardinal to begin the work of establishing seminaries, but the succeeding general superior of his order disapproved. After prayer and counsel of others, John decided it was best to leave the order. That same year, John founded a new community, ultimately called the Eudists. The Congregation of Jesus and Mary were their proper name. They were devoted to the formation of the clergy by conducting diocesan seminaries. The new venture, while approved by individual bishops, was met with immediate opposition from others within the church. Although technically lacking approval from Rome, John founded several Catholic seminaries in Normandy to assist the clergy in their learning. In his parish mission work, John was disturbed by the sad condition of sex workers who sought to escape miserable life and mistreatment by others. Temporary shelters were founded, but the arrangements were not satisfactory to the women. A certain lady who cared for several of the prostitutes and sex workers one day said to John, where are you off to now? To some church, I suppose, where you'll gaze at the images and think yourself pious, and all the time what is really wanted of you is a decent house for these poor women. The words and the laughter of those present struck deeply within St. John's heart. The result was a new religious community called the Sisters of Charity of the Refugee, which opened its doors to prostitutes and sex workers who sought a new life and new vocation. John Eudes is probably known best for two central and inseparable themes in his writings. The first, Jesus is the source of all holiness, and the second, Mary is the perfect model of the Christian life. Here is a quote from St. John Hughes. You must never separate what God has so perfectly united. So closely are Jesus and Mary bound up with each other that whoever beholds Jesus sees Mary. Whoever loves Jesus loves Mary. Whoever has devotion to Jesus has devotion to Mary. 
St. John died at the ripe age of 79 in the year 1680 in France. He was not canonized until 1925 by Pope Pius XI. A lesson for each of us in the life of St. John Hughes was that many felt he was not up to the challenges before him. Many found him to be uneducated or too simple-minded, and yet it was the simplicity of his heart that led him to great devotion of the hearts of Jesus and Mary. It was because of St. John's simplicity of love that he made the difference in the lives of so many, priests and prostitutes alike. Truly, St. John Hughes walked in the love of Almighty God and then gave it away to those around him. Amen.